Hey guys, JD here with the Kawasaki Ultra 310 LXS. And today I wanted to provide something to help out the Kawasaki community here. And this is gonna be my quick five-step diagnostic if your ski is losing boost, RPM, or speed. So the information I'm providing you with today is not an end-all. This isn't a complete diagnostic of every little thing it could possibly be. It is possible you have a defect in your ski or you have a problem. This happens with machines, whether it's a, a jet ski, a boat, a car, an airplane, a lawnmower, it doesn't matter. Machines are susceptible to problems. So you've got a new Ultra 310 and you've basically lost some speed. So I'm not going to get into a theoretical discussion today about the direct relationship between speed and RPM on something like a jet ski. And that's because there are an endless number of variables that can affect the ultimate speed of a jet ski in the water. Rider weight, wind resistance, water resistance, load condition. There's so many different things. And if you were reaching a certain RPM before and you're not now, part of it could be related just to the water conditions or the time of year. In South Florida here, it's summer. The temperature is now maybe five to 10 degrees hotter on average than it was six months ago. So that's gonna affect your top speed. That's gonna affect the top RPM that this vehicle can achieve. This is a one-to-one -one drive ratio. There is no transmission. So always keep that in mind. If you're, if you're chasing a couple miles an hour, it could be related to the time of year. So to have different outings with speeds varying by a couple miles an hour is not unrealistic at all for any jet ski. But I'm gonna give you my top five tips on a couple things you can check if your ski has lost some speed. And the first thing is fuel. We need to take an honest assessment, one of the type of fuel that you used in your ski. So did you use ethanol? Did you use fuel containing ethanol? If you use 93 octane fuel containing ethanol and your tank in the ski sat full of that fuel for over a week, then that fuel has already started what's called phase separation. So basically your fuel is now contaminated with water and that's because it contains ethanol. I encourage you to go to Google and to research phase separation further if you don't know what it is. So if you're, if you're taking your ski out, you're burning through a tank and then you're filling it up with fuel containing ethanol and then you go to use your ski again and you've noticed loss of speed or loss of performance, it's probably related to your fuel. Now if you use Rec 90, which is available out in the water, Rec 90 does not contain ethanol. I add this to every gasoline powered vehicle I own and I own quite a few of them. This is K100. Now basically if you, I'm not gonna do this here, but if you look at this up on YouTube, you could see there's quite a few people who have done tests of this and shown how well it works. You can see it says, we make water burn, made in the USA. Sea foam, stable, those are all garbage in my opinion. This is the only product on the market that actually works. So fill your tank up with 93 octane, which contains ethanol in the United States. Add the required amount of this. This bottle here will get you through about three Phillips and it's about $25. This boosts octane, stabilizes your fuel for up to two years, revitalizes old fuel, helps stop internal corrosion. This stuff is incredible. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I just use this I have this on auto renew on Amazon. I receive a bottle of this every month. Okay, so you have good fuel in your ski and it's still having some performance related issues, okay? So I wanna ask you this. When's the last time you replaced your fuel filter bag? This is a genuine Kawasaki fuel filter. Chances are you're gonna say never because you have to remove this whole assembly, take the handlebars off, pull the fuel pump out of the ski and change out the filter. I've changed mine once I've yet to do a video on it because it's, I have a lot of voiceovers I have to do and a lot of editing. And uh, cause it, it's not exactly easy. It's not, it's not the most difficult thing, but it is kind of a pain to get this all apart. So if you haven't changed this, if you have more than 10 hours on your ski and you haven't changed this yet, or you haven't inspected this yet, that could be suspect. I, I forget how much those are, but just for anybody watching this, this is the part number. 49019 That is for the new 2022 and up. They did change the fuel pump for these. 
So finally, if you've checked the quality of your fuel, you've checked the age of the fuel, you've checked your fuel filter, you're still having issues, well, it's possible that you have a problem with your injectors or with your fuel pump. If you did let the ski sit with fuel containing ethanol, then the number of problems you could have related to that are endless. So the key is to never let your ski sit full of gasoline containing ethanol unless one, it's been treated with a product like this. Now I can't speak for any other products. This is the one I use. So if you've treated your fuel K100, it should be completely fine. But you know, if you use crappy fuel from a questionable source that contained debris or you're out there, you know, in the dust pouring fuel in, you know, it, fuel related issues are a big cause of loss of performance. Next, the biggest thing I see people neglect on these skis is, and if you've ever texted me or emailed me with performance issues, you know that I've said the spark plugs, where I show you exactly how to install the plugs, which plugs to use, how to put anti-seize on them, how to gap them and torque them properly. Very few people have watched that. It has very few views. So, you know, go and watch that. This is a four cylinder dual overhead cam, supercharged engine, intercooled and boosted. It's got a lot of moving components. And in order for those to function properly, you have to take care of the basics first. So we discussed fuel. Now we're gonna talk about spark. So you have four cylinders, each with one spark plug. Do you replace your plugs every 25 hours? If so, which plugs did you use? Did you gap them properly? These are all questions that you need to ask yourself. Honestly, don't say, oh yeah, I changed them. Think, did you log it in the back of your owner's manual? Did you grease the fittings? So these should come out really easily. I wanna show you. See how easily that comes out? It's because it's coated in grease, dielectric grease. The plug down in there, the same thing. You shouldn't have to fight with these to get them out. Again, the spark plugs need to be changed every 25 hours. You pull those plugs out and look at them, they're gonna be dirty. The other big thing is to make sure that those plugs are torqued properly. If your plug is not tight, you'll be losing compression, allow debris and salt water to enter the engine. So those plugs need to be torqued properly and you need to use anti-seize on them. I'm very aware of the memo that NGK put out regarding anti-seize and the platinum coating on plugs that does not apply to a personal watercraft used in a marine environment. If you don't feel comfortable using anti-seize, then use Molly grease as specified by the Kawasaki service manual. Although I can tell you, I've talked to leaders in the industry and they all recommend anti-seize, so that's what I recommend as well. So we've looked at fuel related issues, we've looked at spark related issues, so what's next? A big problem I always see with these skis is the oil level. Dealers are clueless and they tend to overfill these. The key is that the engine needs to be perfect, and I've shown this, I did a comprehensive oil change video where I showed the exact process. So I suggest you guys go over and watch that. The engine needs to be level, not the ski, the engine. You need to put a level on the engine, jack your trailer up or down in order to get that engine 100% perfectly level. Then you need to make sure that the dipstick is facing to the left of the ski. This loop makes a big difference. It needs to be facing to the left, not the right. Get your engine fully level. You're gonna start it up. You're gonna let it run for a little bit. You're gonna shut it off. You're gonna pull the dipstick out, wipe it off, stick the dipstick in, pull it out again, and your oil should be right in the middle of the dipstick. Do not overfill. Now I wanna show you what happens when you overfill the oil. So you're running in the ocean at high speed, you're zipping around, you're in the lake doing circles. So that excess oil vapor and excess oil combines, that oil vapor travels through this breather right here into your catch can where it mixes with water vapor from the steam as part of the normal combustion process. That then travels through this breather line here into your air box, where it's then aspirated into the supercharger and into your intercooler. I've seen pictures in the forums, if your intercooler is full of a yogurt-like substance, that's an emulsified mix of water and oil, and it'll cause an extreme loss of performance, it'll gum up everything. It's not gonna cause damage per se because it is oil, but it will not let the engine breathe as well and will clog everything up and you're gonna to have to unassemble everything basically and clean it out. So you do wanna monitor oil level. You do wanna monitor this line on top of the catch can. And you wanna make sure, it, it will have a little bit of emulsified oil mix in it, but you wanna make sure that it's not full. And also you've seen I've removed my intercooler for inspection. You wanna make sure that it's not completely packed full 
of emulsified mix. If you've owned an Ultra and you've had your oil overfilled, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so you've checked your fuel, you've checked your spark, and you've checked your oil levels, and those are good, but you're still having some issues. So the next step is to check all your hoses, all your hoses here. So these hoses are all pressurized. This unit has a very large supercharger that's producing a lot of boost. All these hoses are pressurized. So you have your main duct from the supercharger to the inner core. You have a duct from the inner core to the throttle body. You have this duct right here to the supercharger relief valve. And then you have a mechanical BOV on the back of the inner cooler right here. Now this mechanical BOV has a nut in it that adjusts the tension on a spring that controls the diaphragm inside the BOV. Now sometimes from the factory this is misadjusted, riding in salt water if you don't fog properly, that could get stuck and be bleeding off boost prematurely. So if you are having issues with boost, I suggest you remove this BOV, lube it up, tighten that nut a couple turns, check all these hose clamps, they should be tightened to factory spec. One I believe is an eight millimeter. These ones are seven millimeter. You need to make sure that they're all very tight. I've had this pop off on me before out on the water. These are return lines. The tension on these does not matter as much. Um, it's, it's really this hose here, this duct here. You also need to make sure that these bolts that hold the throttle body in place are also very tight and that the gaskets are all intact on this throttle body spacer here which has the vacuum pickup line. Make sure this line doesn't have any nicks in it and make sure that all this hardware holding the throttle body, the spacer, and all this is tight. That's kind of common sense. You could be losing boost that way. So the next question comes up, oh, I've checked all those hoses, they're all tight, but I'm still not reaching peak boost performance. Well, that brings us to our tensioner assembly. Now I'm running a Cowie Performance Automatic Tensioner. You can see it down there. This has no bushing. It's got dual stainless steel bearings. It's all sealed with stainless steel components. I've also got the Cowie Performance spring bushing kit. And I'm gonna show you what the stock spring looks like. I've also got a Cowie Performance stainless steel idler pulley. If you don't have these components and you're not looking to spend the money on them, I will show you the stock components that do require more maintenance than these Cowie Performance components, but should be fine as long as they're properly maintained. First, I wanna show you the BOV because that's what we just talked about. This is a spare BOV I have, and you can see it's got this nut here that holds this mechanical plunger in place. Now I can't press it with one hand, but when a specified pressure is reached within the intercooler, I believe it might be, you know, 16.8 or 17 PSI, this will pop open and bleed that boost back to the air box. So you might be losing boost prematurely. So give a couple turns on this nut right here and that will prevent this from bleeding off your boost prematurely, causing you to lose RPM and speed. So this is a stock Kawasaki spring, and I'm just gonna show you here, it's got these bushings in the top of the spring. Now these tend to bind, and just a little bit of binding on these can lead to loss of performance. Even if it's 100 or 200 RPM, that could be a mile an hour in some cases. So these bushings need to be removed and greased this isn't something you'll see in the service manual. This is something you'll see from individuals like me and others in the industry who have been servicing and riding these skis for long enough to know uh, the points that need the most maintenance. So you got your spring bushings. Of course, my spring has got the Cali Performance upgraded bushings, which include a marine polymer brass ferrule, as well as plastic inserts. So they don't bind up like this one here. This is the stock tensioner, and you can see it's got a bushing here. And this bushing, I can't even move it with, with one hand here while I'm trying to film, but this bushing here needs to be unassembled. I've shown videos on how to do this. You basically have to pop these rings off the side and there is a bushing inside this casing here that needs to be greased. In addition to that, you have an idler pulley. Now, like any car or any boat, this, and you can see this is the stock one that I removed because it's, it's uh, but this bearing here needs to be serviced. Kawasaki sells this as a whole unit, but every hundred hours or so, you're gonna wanna replace this whole unit if you're running the stock one. If you're trying to chase every single little, little RPM, then these are things you need to look at. This is from K-Speed. This is a billet anodized block off plate for the BOV. So the guys at K-Speed will say they've had a lot of issues, you know, people coming in losing boost, and it's because of that BOV leaking. 
So they'll just remove it completely and put this block off plate. And then all these components are basically driven by a belt, as you know. So this right here is a genuine Kawasaki belt. I keep these on hand. I have like two or three of these on hand. You want to make sure that your belt is operating at peak efficiency and that it's not frayed or worn out. Most people will have a plastic shroud covering the belt. I've removed that shroud so that I can inspect it. You know, and if you see any fraying, this serpentine belt is very similar to the belt you'd find on your car made in the last 25, 30 years or so. Pretty much every car has a serpentine belt. You've checked all your pivot connections. You've checked all your hoses. It could be that your belt is worn out and needs to be replaced. Again, I've done full videos on replacing that. So if you suspect that that's the problem, you should replace that as well. All right, so you've checked your fuel, you've checked your spark, you've checked your oil, you checked your air. So by air, I mean you've checked all your supercharger ducts, your belt, your tensioner, all that stuff. So the next thing you have to check is your exhaust filter. Just like everything else I've discussed, I have done comprehensive videos on this as well. So this is what the exhaust filter looks like. You can see this one's worn out, as is this one, and as is this one. The, especially in salt and the way I ride, these filters become corroded, they become clogged up, and they reduce performance. If you're running a little bit higher temp, your oil temp seems to be a little higher than normal, then could be your exhaust filter. The performance loss is directly correlated with a lack of maintenance. Now you might say, oh, I, I follow everything, I do everything, and it's completely possible that there's another problem with your ski. So the next thing we're gonna check is the jet pump. The jet pump. So even a little piece of plastic, like I've seen plastic rings from milk bottles, they could get sucked up in there and cause cavitation, cause issues with your pump. You wanna inspect the pump thoroughly. It might be time to replace your pump bearings. And I've done a video on removing the pump and inspecting the bearings. So that's supposed to be done every season or every hundred hours. So did you pull your pump off? Did you check the bearings? Did you pull the cone off? Did you check the seals? Those are all things you need to check. And if you can't do it, have your mechanic do it. Check your intake. The biggest thing too is to check the intake itself. Make sure everything is tight. Make sure you have silicone filling all the gaps. That silicone makes a difference, up to a mile an hour in some cases. You can see here, it's all sealed. And I just want to add this in just because, you know, some people might, this might happen to you. Make sure you're using your black key and your ski is in full power mode. The ski starts in medium power mode by default. You got to push this button after you start it and make sure it's in full power mode. Some people some people might not realize that. I had a guy email me. He's like, oh, my ski's not running right. And he sends me a picture of his display showing me, oh, it only has 10 hours. And I said, dude, you're in medium power mode. And he's like, what? I'm like, you need to push the mode button to activate full power mode to give you access to the engine's full power. That's your full power tune. He's like, oh, the other thing I'll tell you is if you get a tune from Revo or you get a tune from wherever and you start adding aftermarket components, that changes everything to the ski. I can speak personally to the K-Speed tune. I've run it for over a hundred hours now with zero issues, zero problems. If you have a Riva tune, I can't speak to any problems that might come up because of that. So the K-Speed tune, you should not have any issues. I'm always more than happy to help diagnose your ski, but my first question I'm gonna ask you is, did you read your owner's manual and did you purchase the $80 service manual? Most people say, no, I haven't purchased it. Purchase the service manual, read your owner's manual, go from there. Hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching, JD's Waterworld. If you enjoyed this video, remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more Kawasaki content, only on JD's Waterworld.